and mention your name and the media you're coming from. The first question, Ben Sandy Lenz. Thank you, Stefan. If I could ask uh, uh, Mr. Albaca one question, also for Luis Brazier. Uh, Mr. Albaca, there's a lot of resistance to the expansion of your airline uh, in, the, uh, in the Asia Pacific, where I come from, and in other countries. Can you give us your succinct message to those people who are standing in your way so that we can see more of your flights uh, in our country, Australia, and in other parts of the world? And can I ask Mr. Brasher, um, there is growth, of course, built into your designs, and you made a reference a moment ago to growth in the engine. Can you tell us, and I know this is a risky question, can you tell us how much growth and how soon you might envisage at this stage in the A350 family? Uh, well, uh, if you cannot put up with the demand of the passengers, then you better shut up. Because passengers today demand better product, better amenities, good value for money, and the fastest way to travel from point A to point B. And this is not being achieved by a lot of airlines today. They do not have uh, the uh, courage to invest. They do not have uh, the stomach to compete. And at the same time, they want to keep the cake and eat it themselves. Those days have gone. There are Gulf carriers that are ready to, 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 to compete. We are more efficient. Uh, we get more out of our uh, uh, employees, uh, uh, better commitment. And at the same time, we give the best value for money to the passengers. So for this, of course, you will always find people who are afraid of competition, who were too laid back in all these decades, where they were minting money on the cost of the passengers, swindling them, and giving them a crap product. Those days have gone. Now they have to compete. And today we are in a a, a global marketplace where it will only be survival of the fittest. Thank you. So you give this message to the people that are making all this nonsense about, about Qatar Airways and our expansion. Next question is a rule, please. Well, regarding the, the growth of the, of the products, uh, if you take the V330, uh, uh, which uh, was launched in the 90s, uh, we uh, constantly improved uh, the product. The engine manufacturers, and they can get easily a couple of percent uh, fuel burn reduction uh, with insertion of new technology. Tony would claim it's not so easy, but he will do it. Uh, we can also increase uh, the performance of the aircraft. Then there is the introduction into service of uh, the Dash 1000 with a, a brand new engine of 97,000 pounds, which will be fantastic. So we are just at the beginning of a new family of aircraft and during the next 20 years we will constantly improve it as we are doing the 320 and the 330. The beauty is that we have invested more than 10 billion euros up front and these additional upgrades will be done at marginal costs compared to the initial investment. So this is what we are looking for. Uh, because we need to constantly improve the performance of our products. Next question to the gentleman over there. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi to dear speakers. My name is Sergei Mertarsian. I'm coming from Russia. I'm here. I'm here. Hello. So, uh, two questions in one. Uh, uh, to Airbus, uh, what's your first customer in Russia for? 350 and to Qatar Airways. Do you plan to fly to Demandedova with this aircraft? Thanks. For us, it's, it's very simple. Uh, Aeroflot is one of our first customers and has ordered, uh, uh, to my knowledge, 22 A350s. A so uh, uh, we have a strong customer in Russia. Uh, your question to Qatar Airways, I did not understand. Can you repeat it, please? Okay, uh, yes, uh, okay. Yes, we, we plan to operate uh, to Russia with the Airbus A350, and uh, we would like to expand 
our network in uh, in Russia, and hopefully that uh, we will operate to Saint Petersburg in not too distant future. This is the aircraft. Yes, uh, uh, this is uh, an aircraft that will be operating to all these new destinations. Thank you. Next one, the lady over there. Uh, hello, Delphine Edmond from France Bleu Toulouse, Radio France. Can we have a, a precise explanation in the, why the delivery was postponed, except that the IOS is a very uh, Well, I know that you want to get a sensational news out, but unfortunately I will not give you the pleasure of that. <laughs> For one very simple reason, that we had small issues with our BFE supplier, which was uh, resolved by them. Uh, the delay was nothing to do with Airbus, but what is important for you to note is that the aircraft has been delivered to us one week before schedule, not late, because our commitment with, uh, with uh, the commitment from Airbus was to deliver the aircraft to us in the third quarter of uh, 2014, and the third quarter of 2014 ends on the 31st of December 2014. So you are lucky that we didn't wait till the last day. <laughs> Thank you. Next question in the room. Mayor Osman, Bloomberg News. Yeah, good morning. Um, I know it's going to be a very difficult question. No, no. No, I'm sure he knows the entire answer, actually. Can you tell me what you're doing to ensure that you reach the um, 10 per month by the end of 2018? And what measures you're taking to uh, ramp up production even beyond that rate after 2018? You want me to answer? Or did you? Yeah. Uh, but this is, uh, this, this is a challenge because uh, these are new technologies and uh, ramping up is, uh, is always uh, uh, difficult. But first of all, we have uh, prepared that up front. So we have not waited for the certification and delivery of a aircraft to prepare for the ramp up. Uh, as an example, at the end of 2015, uh, we will achieve at our level a rate three, meaning that we have already suppliers which are at rate three or above rate three what not, what right now. Uh, second, uh, this is a ramp up which is progressive. Uh, in other terms, achieving rate 10 early 2018 uh, is something that we have done in the past. If we do a good job with an appropriate level of maturity of the aircraft, uh, I think we can, we can do that. And third point, uh, we have drawn the lessons uh, of uh, the challenges we faced on the F380, especially regarding the customization of the aircraft. Yes, there is a lot of flexibility regarding the customization, but this is a driven uh, flexibility which is compatible with the architecture of the aircraft. And this one is new and will help us uh, develop heads of versions for uh, new customers faster than ever. So these are, for me, the three enablers regarding the ramp-up of the A350. Next question in the room, Robert Wall. Um, yeah, hi. Uh, Mr. Abakar, sorry, over here. Um, just wanted to ask you, uh, when you took delivery of the 380 in Hamburg, you said you wanted to see what the experience was like um, for a while before you decided whether to take more or not. You're getting your fourth one today. Can you give us a sense of what your thinking is in terms of going beyond the 10 you have on order? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, the performance of the A380 has uh, exceeded our expectation that dispatch reliability of Qatar Airways A380 is 100%. Uh, it has been very well received by our passengers. And uh, for me to, uh, to order more, yes, uh, we still have uh, three options to confirm. And we will uh, take more aircraft uh, uh, of this type once we operate the aircraft for a period of at least 12 months and see all the benefits that this aircraft is going to bring to the airline. Next question. Hi, 
Fabrice de Garcia Fletcher. This is just a follow-up to Julia's question and your response, Fabrice. Um, you emphasize that in order to ramp up production, you're really going to want to go back to the catalog. And at the same time, the customers for the aircraft are going to want to customize. So how are you going to reconcile those two? But the, the, the catalog doesn't come only from Airbus and has been built together with airlines, start, starting with Qatar Airways. Uh, and uh, also, uh, most of our customers understand the industrial constraints, understand that uh, uh, there is uh, some room left for the customization, especially in the premium business and first class categories. But we need also to have standardized uh, industrial processes. And I think this is the check and balance we had, especially for the first three, four years of the development when we started to build this, this catalog. So we have, I believe, a, a right balance between uh, uh, the necessity to customize such, uh, such an aircraft and at the same time uh, standardize solutions for an industrial ramp. Next question in the room. Tim Heffer from Reuters. I'm Tim Heath from Reuters. Um, Mr. Albaca, we know how, what an important role you had in helping Airbus design the A350 specifically. You advised them not to go with the route they were originally planning. Uh, what advice do you have for them now on the A380 and specifically whether to re-engine it? Mr. Brezier, could you uh, tell us, you just told us that upgrades could be done at marginal cost, but is that also the case with the A380 and are you prepared to exclude now uh, or put a lid on this speculation that the A380 will be discontinued? Well, uh, Atal Airways is, uh, like I said earlier, very satisfied with this aeroplane and I don't know what more Airbus can do to make uh, this aeroplane better. It's a very fine aircraft and uh, we don't teach aircraft manufacturers uh, what to, to do with their aeroplanes. We only help them uh, to, to improve the, the passenger amenity, uh, amenities in an airplane. So I think the answer to your question will be better given by Fabrice. Well, regarding the, the A380, uh, uh, first of all, uh, as you can see, we uh, uh, are now fully in the, in the industrial phase of this, of this program. We will deliver this year 30 aircraft. Uh, as planned. We, second point, uh, in 15, 16, 17, uh, our order book is uh, uh, largely filled, almost fully, fully booked uh, for the, the production of close to 30 aircraft a year. And uh, uh, clearly our challenge is to get more customers. And uh, we believe uh, we can do that because the trend of the market is towards higher, uh, bigger aircraft and the traffic will double every 10, 15 years. So the trend is in favor of the f 3 And in this context, uh, the fact uh, that uh, we would have in mind internally at Airbus or Airbus Group that we would stop uh, the f 3 is just crazy. After all the efforts we have made, we are about to be break even next year. We are about to, to be successful with this program as uh, uh, Akbar mentioned to you, uh, so we will continue. And one day, we will look for incremental uh, improvements of the aircraft. Clearly, uh, re-engineering is uh, one option. This is not limited to that. And I even made the point that longer term, we have extra potential for a stretch version, very longer term, when the market requires it. Uh, so uh, uh, I can tell you that the F380 will have a brighter future uh, as the market is, uh, is getting bigger. Next question. My name is Fabi from Indonesia. My first question is about uh, the, growth, uh, the world economic growth is going slowly. And maybe uh, in 2015, uh, the aircraft industry is going slowly. And for Qatar Airways, what is your opinion about the economic growth is going slowly? And the second question uh, from Airbus, uh, this aircraft is uh, more competitive than uh, the competitor Boeing 777 and 787. And my question is about the price. How about the price? And the second question, how many com company or maybe institution that involved to build uh, the aircraft? Thank you. 
Well, the economy is uh, globally is on the way to recovery, and uh, with the economic recovery will be additional demand for air travel. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that uh, every economy is very cyclical, and uh, from time to time uh, it goes up and down. But at the end of it, it, it has always recovered, and uh, we can see signs of recovery uh, in the global air travel and uh, a better uh, economic health of uh, countries uh, globally. Next question in the room, please. You, uh, if I just perhaps a, a, a word on the, on the, on the price. Uh, the competitivity uh, is uh, uh, not limited to the technical performance. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the mix uh, price, quality, performance, and also reliability. Uh, and I think uh, on top of that, uh, we are on the right spot. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, you referred to 787 and 777. And with the 350, 900, and 1000, we attack these two competitors. In other terms, with only one family, uh, we cover the 787 and uh, uh, the, the 777. And I think this is a big strength. And then, when you have pilots flying the F330, and you want them to fly the F350, it takes only eight days of training. When you have pilots flying the F350 and moving to the F380, it takes only five days because it's common cockpit. And this one also is the philosophy of Airbus, which is extremely important for the airlines. They can operate the whole family of aircraft of Airbus with almost the same crews. Thank you. Next question in the room. There's no more question, one more question from our colleague from China. No, no, no. Hi, I'm from Taiwan Airway Magazine. So I would like to have a question for Air Baker. Could you please uh, have a more specific detail about your routing for A350? Because we know that the, the C number between A350 is 283. And for Turbo 7, 200 LI is 259. And for 787, it's 254. So there's not so much more difference. So which the utilize for the aircraft for A350? Thank you. Uh, well, there may not be very much difference in seat numbers. What the operating economics has a huge difference. The, uh, the A350 is the most fuel efficient airplane today. So there is a big difference. You cannot compare the others with this airplane. Seat numbers is irrelevant when you call when you when, when you look at operating efficiencies of an airplane. Secondly, uh, as far as the route of this 350 is concerned, we have already announced that the first aircraft will operate between uh, Doha and Frankfurt, and the first flight will be on the 15th of January next year. The rest of the routing of this airplane will be to the eastern seaboard of the United States and uh, new destinations both in Europe, in Asia, and in Africa. You said London before? You mentioned London already? I didn't mention London, I just yes, said Europe, did. which is, uh, London is included in Europe, right? <laughs> <laughs> How long? <laughs> Unless you have already excluded Britain from the EU. <laughs> One final question in the room. I have a question um, for uh, Mr. Pepper uh, I'm a reporter uh, from China and a magazine named uh, Aerospace Knowledge. My question is, uh, I know that China will take delivery of the A350 in uh, 2018. Uh, it's not very early, early time. And I have a question that uh, you know that China is one of the, one of the largest markets in the future. And what do you uh, think about the potential uh, of the A350 in China? Well, the, the potential uh, uh, of the A350 uh, in China is huge as uh, uh, China will progressively become the biggest uh, market, including for long-range aircraft. Uh, 
the uh, issue we are facing is the slot availability of these aircraft. We have 780 aircraft to be delivered, and uh, uh, clearly uh, now new customers beyond Air China have to wait a little bit uh, uh, to get uh, uh, new deliveries. So uh, in the meantime, uh, we are offering other shorter term availability based especially on the F-330, uh, but I am sure the F-350 will be very successful among uh, the top airlines uh, in China. Thank you very much, His Excellency Fabrice Tony. I now conclude 